Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. So, you know, we've been getting a lot of questions recently about when am I going to make a profit? When can I expect to make money? What kind of profit am I going to make? When? How do I make money? What kind of profit am I going to make? When am I going to start making money? When, when can I expect to profit? Can I afford sheep? Can I afford goats? You know, the bottom line is, is a lot of you are treating your farm like a hobby and you really want it to be a business. And we need to sit down and have a talk about how to reconcile the two. Today, we're just gonna break down some basic costs and I'm gonna throw some ideas at you that I want you to think about. In our subsequent videos that are gonna come up, we're gonna have about three of them we're going to hone in on very specific things that you can do to make more money. But today what I wanna do is I just wanna do a general breakdown and I wanna show you how small, how teeny tiny of a profit margin there really is in raising sheep and goats. So you can kind of wrap your head around it a little bit better. If you wanna treat raising sheep and goats like a hobby, that is fantastic. There are still a lot of things in this video series that you're gonna learn about that are gonna help you out immensely. However, this video is mainly for those of you that wanna make a profit off of your sheep and goat farm and learn how to hone in on the skills that you need to learn in order to be profitable as a business. Stay tuned to find out more. The unfortunate answer in a nutshell is you're not going to make money. The unfortunate truth with raising sheep and goats is for most individuals out there, this turns into a hobby that either pays for itself or a hobby that may cost you a little bit of money. The decision making process that goes into turning a profit when raising sheep and goats can take the fun and the enjoyment out of uh, raising the animals. Uh, tough decisions have to be made as far as culling animals, um, getting rid of unhealthy animals, making very, very tough decisions that are more business oriented when you may be getting into this because you just enjoy the animals. It's very, very hard to reconcile the two. It's very, very hard to keep all the animals that you find cute and cuddly and that may need your help and also raise the stock that you need to make uh, the money that you may be looking for. Most producers that I know, including myself, uh, have other full-time jobs and other revenue streams that are their main source of income. And then raising livestock is something that's done on the side as a supplemental income uh, for multiple reasons. One, because we enjoy it. And two, because if you are successful at it, you can make a nice supplemental income. For me to crunch the numbers and actually tell you how many animals I would have to raise in order to do this full-time and quit my, uh, quit my full-time job that I do now would be astronomical. I, I would guess in the high hundreds to um, maybe the low thousands of, of actual heads of animals that I would have to raise. Now, this is for those of you that are just raising animals. I'm not talking about those of you that are living off the grid, doing homesteading, <clears throat> excuse me, to where you're raising this to feed your family for sustenance. I'm, I'm talking about those of you that are saying, okay, I want to do this just for mere income. If you're talking about living off the grid, if you're talking about homesteading, and then that's a completely different animal. So I wanted to make this video so we can go through this step by step and just kind of talk about, no kidding, what goes into raising these animals and what can you expect and what are some of the tough decisions that you're gonna have to make. I haven't really decided yet as to how many uh, different s segments are going to make up this series, if it's gonna be three videos or four videos, um, but this is the introduction video. This is the video that's just kind of getting you started and just some general topics to talk about. And then we're going to kind of move into um, some other topics as far as marketing, selling, what you can expect, how to make more money, uh, why you definitely need to do your own veterinary work, why you definitely need to do your own bookkeeping, um, some, some of the pitfalls and some of the hard truths that go into this. 
you know, I watch videos just like the rest of you. I, I watch a lot of the programs that are out there and I'm aware of the fact that, you know, you get this wide degree of exposure when it comes to sheep and goat videos and small farm videos for that matter. Um, I see really, really bad information out there. Um, I see really good information. And I know that a lot of people are more into telling you their story um, and what they believe, um, maybe some of their uh, feelings about things. And they're not really ed necessarily educating you on how to raise animals. They're not teaching you skills. And that's, that's kind of our bread and butter here at Lanessa Farms. Our goal is, is to be an educational program for you and to actually teach you skills. So uh, I think the best place to start is to kind of establish the hierarchy of what makes the most money and what makes the least money. And again, I'm going to make some generalities during this video series today. Um, it doesn't always hold true in every case, but this is kind of if you had to find the median, because let's be honest, I, I can't make these videos for each and every one of you as an individual. I have to make this for you as a group. Um, and I'm just going to tell you the truth. And some of it you're going to really like, some of it you're going to be shocked by, some of it you are not going to like what I tell you at all. But, you know, I'm probably going to tell you some things that some people won't tell you. The truth of the matter is, is, you know, we're all in the business of selling sheep and goats. And if a customer comes to you with money and they say, here is my money, I want to buy a sheep or a goat from you, uh, there's always going to be that pressure there for individuals to tell that individual what they want to hear. Um, I see it all the time where people say, oh yeah, sure, it's easy to raise uh, sheep and goats. You know, the person may have not a clue how to raise sheep and goats and they're like, oh yeah, they, yeah it's easy. Um, recently, I heard an individual tell somebody, they said, oh yeah, these, these animals have uh, uh, two, they always have twins and they have babies twice a year. Um, you know, simple things like that that are just, they're just not true. So let's start off by talking about the hierarchy of, of what makes the most money and what makes the least amount of money. So at the top of the level, at the very tippy top, um, when we look at what makes the most money, this is your champion show stock. This is, you know, your well-established breeders that are constantly winning at nationals, they're constantly winning at the shows, and they are selling strictly show stock and they are making big, big bucks at auctions and selling their show stock. People want to win and people pay big, big money to win. People, uh, it is very, very common for county fairs, even at the county fair level, uh, to see individuals spend well over $5,000 on a castrated male on a weather just for their kid to show at 4-H. And that's not counting jackpot shows and uh, private shows and everything else. So Breeding stock is kind of at the top of our game, and if you're winning at it, uh, it is, it's very, very lucrative. And again, as we get into the different video series, we're going to be talking about who it is that you're buying from and what that means. Uh, I don't want to spoil things too much, but just to give you an idea of where we're headed, uh, if you're wanting to get breeding stock, a uh, show person, a club lamb person, as we say in the industry, may not be the best person to buy from because they're interested in how that animal is going to show more than they're interested in maybe the genetics that are there or how good the mother was or if the animal's prone to some kind of genetic deficiency or something like that. They want an animal that you're going to be able to feed out and show really well. So I'm not going to get too much more in the deep weeds. Let's keep on moving. So after we get into show stock, our next one is probably going to be breeding stock and specialty stock. Um, so these are the producers that raise for breeding stock and they are very um, oriented on genetics, uh, lineage, the line, the breed, where they come from, what are good genetics, what aren't which ones are going to be the lowest amount of uh, input and give you the most amount of babies. A good example of this, there's, there's multiple breeders across the United States. Um, Heli Ranch out in um, the mountain, out in the Rocky Mountains is a good example of this. Jeff Hunter is a good example of this in Indiana. Just to give you an idea, like Jeff Hunter, Jeff's flock has been closed. He has had a closed flock since like the 1980s. He hasn't had any new genetics in there since the 1980s. He has genetically eliminated all the bad things that you can eliminate. Um, Rick Adams, um, 
I could go on and on of, of the breeders across the United States. If you get down south into the Texas area, uh, Aaron Jennings, Aaron's actually a member of the TAC box. Uh, if you ever have questions about South Downs, Aaron's on there, you can ask him. Um, so there are breeders, well-known breeders in the industry all over the United States that specialize. And when you go there and you say, hey, uh, Jeff, or hey, Rick, or or hey, Aaron, I wanna get a breeding stock, they know exactly what uh, to give you and they can tell you everything about that animal and that animal's lineage. The next one that we get down into is probably just your market stock. Um, these are individuals that are raising animals uh, to sell at the meat markets, to sell uh, to ethnic buyers that want to have these animals for meat or for anyone for that matter that want to have these animals for meat. They generally raise these lambs. They want to get them as big as they can, as fast as they can, and then they're going to take them to the sale barn and sell them. Um, and bottom of the of the barrel, so to speak, the, the least money maker that you're going to run into, these are just kind of the all others. This is the individual down the road that, you know, they're doing this for entertainment purposes or because they just love raising livestock and animal husbandry. Uh, these are the people that would just bend over backwards to help a bottle baby, um, help sick animals, things like that. And they're going to be more interested in uh, selling animals to a good quality home to get people introduced into raising livestock and animal husbandry. And these are the individuals that are um, going to sell you usually unregistered livestock at a more reasonable rate. And the good news is, is there's, there's a benefit to buying from each and every one of these people. Each and every one of these people, each and every one of these classes um, has something special to offer you that the other ones can't. Um, your, your least money makers, the ones that are selling for pets and things like that, these are the individuals that are generally uh, the most willing to work with you and generally they just love talking to people and educating people and the show stock people can can really look at an animal and and tell you this is what you're looking for and this is what stands out and this is what this means um, the breed people can tell you all about the breed history what makes a, a good looking animal for that breed confirmation what makes a bad animal so there's lots and lots of information that you can glean and overall what you'll find is if you're willing to take the time to talk with these individuals, they're going to be more than happy to take the time to work with you and educate you about uh, that specific breed. And for the most part, most of them will, will shoot you straight. Uh, it's not too hard to know what to avoid. Um, and we've talked about this before and we'll talk about it more as we roll forward. So with that being said, let's just get into a general idea of how much money could you expect to make off of just run-of-the-mill sheep or goats in a year? So let's just talk about general breeding stock. And again, I have to kind of crunch these numbers for all over the United States, but there's ways that you can find these prices on your own that we'll talk about in future videos. But generally speaking across the United States, when it comes to breeding stock, a good average number to figure on is $300 for breeding ewe lambs. That would be a good quality uh, breeding ewe lamb from a producer that raises livestock for breeding purposes. And when I say ewe lamb, what I mean is a female lamb that was born this year or last fall that we would expect to start breeding this fall. Usually you're looking at um, babies that are born anywhere between November of the previous year through January of the current year. $300 is about what you can expect to pay for uh, a breeding ewe lamb. Now with breeding ram lambs, same basic time period, but obviously we're talking about the males here, you're gonna expect to pay a little bit more money for your rams. Um, and that's across the board, that's generally the way that it goes. I believe the least amount of money I've ever spent for a ram lamb was about $400. I'm gonna tell you the average price is gonna be between five and $600. Um, I have also spent thousands of dollars on breeding lambs, uh, ram lambs. So, you know, the it can vary greatly depending on what you're wanting um, as far as size, shape, genetics, and, and so on and so forth. But for those of you getting started, I think a good place to start is $300 for a ewe lamb, $500 for a ram lamb. And as we roll forward, we'll talk more about why you would wanna buy lambs as opposed to buying 
adults that are, are have already produced. Um, so if we're looking at getting started and today for today's example, we're gonna use the number four and we're gonna say one RAM and three U's. So right off the bat, we're looking at um, $500 for a RAM, $900 worth of use. So we're sending at $1,400 just in livestock to get your foot in the door. Now, one question that you're probably gonna have and that we will talk about more is um, registration. Should I get registered livestock? Should I not get registered livestock? That's completely up to you. If you're going to a breeder uh, to buy these animals, what you're going to find is the cost of, of getting them registered is a nominal fee. Um, so what I mean by that is, is if you're just generally going to pay what the, what the registration cost is. So if you buy a U for me for $300 and you choose that you want to have it registered, uh, I'm just going to charge you what the registration paperwork costs. I would be highly suspect of an individual if you come to my farm and you say, I want a really good U, and I say, well, that used $300, but if you want a registered one, uh, it's gonna be, you know, and I give you some number that's hundreds of dollars more. Um, no, uh, the cost of registration is the registration. Uh, the, I'm not going, it doesn't make them a better animal. Um, so I'm either selling you quality or I'm not. So I've always been kind of weary of that. Uh, with people, or excuse me, leery of that with people that, you know, they want to give me these these astronomically different prices based on if they're registered or if they're not. Um, so with that being said, we'll just, we'll just leave that there. So moving forward, we've got our four animals. Let's get a ballpark idea of what it's going to cost us to feed those animals for the year. So we've already talked a lot about feeding in our previous videos. You can check out uh, our feeding videos. I believe I have five tips for feeding. Check that out here. It's a good place to start. Um, again, if you're new to our channel, please check out some of our other videos. We have great educational opportunities for all of you. So when we talk about feeding our sheep and our goats, we've talked about this in the past and we know that our general rule of thumb is one flake per head per day. And again, if you don't know what that means, it means, you know, when you break down a small square bale, it's going to break down into approximately 14 separate flakes. And you'll know what I'm talking about when you cut open a small square bale. And, uh, and about, there about, it's, it's going to be three and a half pounds of hay per head per day is what a flake's going to come out to. And that's what they need. Um, so if you figure one flake uh, per head per day, that means every animal on your farm is going to eat 365 flakes per year. Um, times four, because we've got our four animals, that puts us at 1,460 uh, flakes per year total. And we're gonna do some math here, and I am going to divide that by 14, because there's 14 flakes in a bale, and that's gonna give me 105. So in the deep weeds, I can say if I have four animals, uh, we're gonna math here together. If I have four animals and they're each eating a flake per head per day, 365 days a year, that's gonna put me at 105 small square bales that I'm going to need to feed four animals for the year. Uh, and I'm going to average those out to $5 a bale. I'm aware that some of you can get it cheaper. I'm aware that some of you are going to get it more expensive. I'm aware that this doesn't work for all of you, but for most of us that are watching the video today, you're gonna to have to feed them hay. You're gonna to have to buy them hay. I will let you work out the math on your own, but this is gonna come out to 105 bales per year for those four animals, which comes out to $525 if we're doing uh, 105 bales. So again, this is just to get our, our feet underneath us. So we've got our cost of our animals so far. We've got the cost of our hay so far, and now we need to talk about grain. We're gonna average one pound per head per day of good quality grain. Uh, could be 12%, could be 16%. This depends on how much money you wanna spend. Uh, this comes out to 1,460 pounds of grain per year. Um, so that's 30, 50 pound bags that you're gonna to have to buy. And the price of these can vary widely. So just for fun, we're gonna say $10 a bag. That gives us an additional $300 per year. So we said we were at 525 for hay, we're at 300 for grain, now we're at 825 per year. So if you look at the numbers right now, you see we've got the input of our animals, we've got the hay cost, and we've got the grain cost, and you can already see where we're at. Again, uh, this is not counting all the other expenses that come into things that we're not even gonna talk about in this video. This is just to give you a general bare bones idea of what it's gonna cost. 
even when you subtract the cost of the livestock, no matter how you slice it, you're still gonna be at $825 per year. So now let's talk about what you can expect when it comes to selling your livestock. All right, so we've talked about some of the money that we're going to spend to raise our animals every year. Uh, let's talk about some of the money that we're going to make. Now, for those of you that are starting off, most of you, especially if you're going to want to make a little extra money, are going to be looking at selling your animals at auction. Uh, this is kind of a middle of the road. It's not the least amount of money that you're going to make, and it's not the most amount of money that you're going to make, but it's a good place to start. Um, in our future videos, we are going to show you how to find what the animals are going for in your area using the internet. And this is uh, going through USDA and some other things to see what current auction prices are. Auction prices can vary widely in the United States. And there's a couple points that I want to make about this. For today's example, we're using sheep as the example. We're talking about butcher lambs. Uh, we're going to say 100 pound lamb on average. I feel comfortable telling you $2.25 cents a pound live weight and when i say live weight what i mean is is that animal alive walking on the scale whatever it weighs we're looking at two dollars and 25 cents a pound live weight every u on average has 1.75 to 2.15 babies per year on average and again we're giving you an average so we're going to say two babies per year average now Again, there are accelerated programs you can do with hormones and some other things to where you can artificially manipulate these ewes to have babies every 18 months. You're pushing them really hard and that's a possibility as well. Uh, there's also the possibility that you may have a breed that tends to have triplets or quads. Um, and again, here's something that I want you to think about when it comes to triplets and quads. A black-faced wool breed that has twins, when it comes to feeding and market weight, those twins will weigh just as much, if not more, than the three or four lambs put together of the hair sheep breed. I know some of you may not like to hear that, but that's just the truth. Um, so you're getting a trade-off, and it is what it is. That's just the that's just the ugly truth. Um, so we're just going to use twins as the example. So six lambs, we've got three ewes. We're going to say we're going to have six 100-pound lambs, and we're going to sell those at $2.25 a pound live weight. That is going to give us a grand total of $1,350 per year that we would make off of these lambs. For most of you, you're going to be selling these lambs once a year in the springtime. Um, once they're weaned, this would be, you know, around Easter time frame. Uh, when they're weaned, maybe a little after, maybe getting into May, um, and you're looking at $1,350 per year. We are going to talk much, much more about this because there's lots of things that you may not be thinking of that you need to think of. For example, uh, we have four animals on the farm and we just equated all of our numbers for those four animals. Well, guess what? If all three of those ewes have twins, now we've just added six more animals to our herd and now we're feeding 10. Um, plus you have creep feed, plus you have electricity and so many other things that go into this. So there's lots and lots of things that you are going to want to think of. Now, some of you may be saying, well, what about goats? Um, goats vary more in price. And so goats are very tempting. You may look at the boar goat market and you may say, well, lambs are selling for $2.25 a pound live weight. Goats are selling for $5 a pound live weight. I should get goats. What I can tell you is, is the cost of buying them for breeding is going to be commensurate to whatever it is that they're selling for at market. So the price of a lamb at market may be $2.25 a pound. That price will be reflected in the breeding stock that I purchase. If the price of a goat is $5 a pound, that will be reflected in the price that you're going to pay for your breeding stock when you buy it as well. So are there a lot of deals to be made? No. In the end, it pretty much all comes out in the wash. Um, and it depends on how you want to look at it. But again, those are topics that we're going to talk about later on in the uh, subsequent video series that we're going to make on this subject. So 
I feel like this was a very good way to get the ball rolling, to give us some things to think about. Again, didn't talk about vet work, didn't talk about fencing, didn't talk about feeders, didn't talk about any of that stuff. This is just a bare bones, gee whiz idea to tell you what you can expect. So when we take all the numbers that we talked about today and we just kind of put them together, and again, we didn't talk about feed uh, additives, we didn't talk about veterinary services, we didn't talk about electricity, fencing, feeders, all these different things that you would need. We're just talking about feed and how much you can expect to make off the animals. You can see that our number over here, when we look at what we're going to make per you, that's not a lot of money. This, this number represents how much we are currently looking at making per you per year. Um, so wrap your head around that and think of all the other uh, costs that are going to be in there. The good news is, is there's lots and lots of ways to manipulate this number to make it larger. Um, there's lots and lots of ways to lower the cost of, of our uh, items that we're going to need to raise these animals. But the truth of the matter is, is it's not going to fluctuate that much. And if you truly want to do this for a living, you can imagine to get this number where you want it to be, imagine how many head of sheep or goats you would have to have to get where you need to be. So with that being said, I think this was a very good introduction for us. I feel like this is a great way to get the ball rolling. Get down in this uh, comment section and leave comments. Uh, let us know what you think. Let us know what you want to talk about in the future videos. And we will do that and we will get headed in the right direction and give you as much information as we can. I'm Tim from Lanasa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.